I'm Insomniac and this is the Timex Expedition Scout Chronograph. Before I get this review started, I'd like to give a big shout out to Anthony for sending this watch in. He also sent in that uh, Pagani Design Daytona that you saw me review recently and a couple other watches that are coming in on the channel soon, so uh, thank you very much for that. If anybody watching this has any watches you'd like to see reviewed on Should I Time This, email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I will let you know where to send the watches. They'll be reviewed, insured, and sent back. Okay, let's get into the watch. The case on this piece can be summed up with one word, decent. At a glance, the steel case is neat and uniformed and finished in such a way that it's very neutral, almost to the extent that it kind of looks like it's trying not to be noticed. The finish has a bead blasted look to it, which adds to this kind of neutral or soft look uh, that the case has overall. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the finishing or machining, but what I'm getting at here is the case lacks definition. The lines and angles overall look like they're just mediocre, almost to the point of being dull, now before you all start yelling at me in the comments, yes, I realize this is a very reasonably priced Timex we're talking about. I'm just saying that I've seen better out there, uh, even from other Timexes that I've reviewed so far. Case back is a screw down tight, brushed stainless with a large Expedition logo engraved into the center and various information about the watch engraved around the outer edge. The crown is nice and large and has great grip to it, while the pushers for the chronograph look nice with the case, but aren't so great in terms of feel. They're soft push buttons that lack any kind of feel whatsoever. The only way you can be sure that you started the chronograph is to make sure that the red second hand is moving. So overall, the case seems about right for a watch in this price bracket. The dial on this piece is clearly where Timex put most of its efforts when putting this piece together, which is smart. It is the part of the watch that you spend time looking at after all. There's nothing necessarily special about this dial, no fancy finishing or really unique touches, but it's basically perfect in its simplicity. The dial is about function over form, and the smart layout and design here prove that. You have a simple cream-colored dial with black printing everywhere. Starting at the outer edge, you have this angled chapter ring with a straight line minute track, but at every five minute interval, you have a recess in the chapter ring with a black square inside of it to emphasize those points. Below that, you have simple numerals for the hours, and one thing Timex did that I like here is use simple, bold black lines at two, six, and 10, being that the dials for the chronograph take up too much room for the numerals. Personally, I'm not a big fan of partial numerals. If a number doesn't fit in a space, don't use one there. Next up, you have the text on the dial. Timex under the 12, Expedition and Chronograph around 9 and 3 respectively, then Indiglo and Water Resistance 100 meters at the bottom. Basically enough text to tell you everything you need to know about the watch, but neatly done without too much clutter. There's a date window at 4 o'clock, simple black numerals on a white disc with a super thin black border around the window. Then you have your sub dials, which are all nice and large on this watch. The dial at 6 o'clock is a running second hand for the main time, while the dials at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock are for the chronograph. At 10 o'clock you have a minute sub dial for the chronograph, and at 2 o'clock a 1 20th of a second sub dial, which indicates a position once you stop the chronograph. My favorite thing about all three of these subdials stems from a complaint that I have about most chronograph subdials from other watches that I've reviewed on this channel. Timex actually has indices for every second and every minute on these subdials, and because of the relative size of these subdials, even those small individual indices are legible, which means that you can actually get a precise and clear read of the hand position when you stop the chronograph. Last but not least, we have the hands, which Timex nailed here. The main hour and minute hands are a great shape, coated in black with sharp tips, and both of them are a perfect length for this dial. The second hand for the chronograph is a red stick style hand with a small arrow tip and a cool counterbalance shape. And all three of the subdial hands are finished in black, but with red tips, which is a nice, subtle, sporty touch to match the red chrono second hand. All of the hands on this dial have excellent contrast against the cream colored backdrop and are the perfect length for their respective dials. So functionally, it's a great dial. There's a lot going on, but it's all laid out in such a way that everything is clean and legible and feels uncluttered. This Timex has two usable complications. The first one being the most obvious, a 1 20th of a second chronograph. Otherwise, you have the date window that I mentioned earlier. Both complications work well, they're easy to use, and legibility is great for both. 
I still don't like the feel of the chrono buttons, but that's more of a physical issue that I'll leave in the case section of this video. Besides, I might not like the feel of the buttons, but they do work every time I've used them. So no real complaints here. So you probably noticed in the dial section what looked like large loom fillings inside the hour and minute hands, but as you can see here in the dark, there is no loom filling on this dial. But that's okay, because you have this. One of the great and most useful party tricks that Timex has been using for years now, Indiglow. You just push on the crown, and the entire watch lights up. In terms of legibility in the dark, this is about as good as you can get other than tritium tubes, which last basically forever, as opposed to this Indiglow, which eventually will need a new battery. You don't have to charge up the loom, you don't have to worry about it fading, you just press the crown and instantly you can see the whole dial. Time at a glance on this watch is superb. Between the high contrast of the black hands and printing against the cream dial, the perfect hand length and the clutter-free, neat, spaced out layout of the indices, you can get an easy and accurate read of the time at a quick glance. Accuracy here is almost flawless. As with most quartz watches I've reviewed, it's perfectly accurate. I've had this watch here for weeks, haven't touched the time, and it's still accurate to the minute. And the chronograph works accurately and reliably, so the watch does its job of keeping time perfectly well. Where it loses a couple of points is with the look of the large second hand for the chronograph. It overshoots most of the indices on the chapter ring by a slight amount, which is an aesthetic thing, but it drives me a little bit crazy. Worse than that, though, is the springiness to the stop of the second hand for the chronograph. It just looks cheap and sloppy with every stop. Where we gain a point back, though, is with the look of the running second hand in the 6 o'clock subdial for the main time. It has a crisp stop to every second and does stop on each individual second index. And as I always say in the chronograph reviews, how often does anyone actually ever use their chronograph? It's more important to have the running second hand for the main time have a quality look to it. So we have that here. The strap on this piece is the most confusing part about the whole watch because aesthetically it's excellent. And not just at a quick glance, even the details here are really well done. The top layer of brown leather looks high quality. You have neat but subtle contrast stitching including a very small but very nice little detail here in the red stitches that run around the sides of the strap just in these four corners. A small touch to complement the red pieces on the dial. The buckle is the right size, a nice shape, matches the case finishing perfectly and has the Expedition logo engraved into it. The strap has a great thickness to it, and it's comfortable on the wrist. So what's the problem then? It's the quality of the strap. And it's actually something that you can't see in the video, it's something you'd have to feel in person. It feels the way you would imagine that a strap on a watch in this price range should look, which is cheap. It almost feels like paper. Uh, that's what makes it confusing though. It not only looks like great quality, but you can see here on camera how thick it is, yet it has a thin, papery feel to it. Not like it's just light or soft. Again, you'd have to feel it for yourself. And this feeling translates to the creases you see here as well. The watch was basically new when it arrived, and in the short time that I've been wearing it, I've noticed more of an increase in the creasing here than I would with some of my better watch straps. So it looks great, it's comfortable, but the quality is questionable. Last but not least, we have value. And not unlike with most Timex watches I've reviewed on this channel, it's one of the areas where this watch really shines. As of the time of this review, I've seen this watch online on various sites for about $99.99, but on Amazon, as of the time of this review, I saw it listed brand new for $67. Now, as you saw in this review, there's nothing necessarily mind-blowing or unique about this piece, but if you just want a fairly handsome, accurate, reliable chronograph from a company that's been making watches for a long time, there isn't much to think about for $67. It's a great watch if you like these aesthetics. So another thank you and shout out to Anthony. Much appreciated for sending these watches in to be reviewed. Definitely leave a like down below, maybe some comments. If you have one of these, definitely let everybody know what you think of it. And uh, hit the thumbs up just for Anthony for sending these watches in because that's pretty cool. Uh, I have lots of watch reviews coming up soon, so stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because, like I said, lots of new awesome stuff coming. A lot of cool watches hitting the channel soon, so do that. And I'll see you all next time.